All right, well, let's let's start things on an easy note, just for um, audio purposes. Why don't you give me your age, name, and occupation? Yeah, my name is Jem Hussein Adams. I am 31 years old, and I am a retail manager. Okay, so what does that entail? Does that mean that you are like in charge of properties that are being? Well, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sorry. Are you in charge of? You know, is it garments? Is it? It is furniture? garments. Uh, so I'm in charge of two lingerie stores. Um, uh, that produces annually about 10 million. Did you work your way up from like I did. sales associate all the way to oh, the tippy top? Try seasonal associate. Oh, yeah. okay. So you were in there for three <laughs> months to like now the big boss. Oh, well, I've been with the company for about 11 years altogether. Wow. Yeah. So I, I worked my way up. I was a seasonal associate and then I kind of, they had commission-based sales and mm -hmm. so I was their number one selling associate in the U.S. and Canada for three consecutive years. My so goodness. Really great sales <laughs> and then I worked my way up from manager to store manager. And is it something you like now to like have the people to try to mentor in the ways that Abs you were? Absolutely. I mean it is my passion. I'm actually going on a stretch assignment next month to Israel for six months as a brand mentor. So funny that you said mentor. Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> is that something you, you actively want to do is, you know, I went through all this stuff and I want to try to reach down to the people below me and hopefully pull them up? Absolutely. I think I have a passion for what I do and I think that I, I want to just like teach mm -hmm. how to do it and kind of um, get anyone who's interested and and like just I'm, I'm big on like mentoring people and kind of having a group of people and watch them go from like nothing to like these amazing um, position in the company. And so I think this is my passion and I get to do it. Sounds a lot like Survivor though, taking a group that's coming from oh. nothing into something. <laughs> so I guess my next question is, what brings you in front of me today? What made you decide to go from, you know, this incredible ladder that you've worked yourself up on to climbing down the ladder back in Fiji and then hopefully win a million dollars along the way. Funny that you said like climbing down the ladder. I'm originally from Guyana, South oh. America. So I lived 19 years there and uh, the environment in Fiji is exactly what I grew up in. Interesting. So coming on Survivor, um, you know, growing up, I, I had a tough upbringing. Like I lived in a shelter with five um, siblings and my mom and oh. it was basically like a shack. Um, and so we hardly have any food to eat, but that's the card that I've been dealt with. And this is my opportunity to come back knowing that I've done that, but how can I use that to my advantage? So that's what I'm, that's why I'm in Fiji. So how did that end up happening and what year did you immigrate? I was 19 when I moved to the U.S. Um, so I lived n 19 years in, in Guyana. Yeah. Wow. And uh, was it sort of something you had always been wanting to do? Did an event prompt it happening? Because I would imagine it's, it's a huge seminal event of your life. It is. I mean, honestly, I'm a go-getter and like sky's the limit for me. And so whatever I put my mind to, I, I don't believe no matter like your education or where you're from define who you are and I think that's like a barrier that I've never really I've broke through that years uh -huh. ago and so I figured you know what I'm gonna apply in Survivor my husband was a he is a super fan okay. and he introduced me to Survivor during the pandemic oh, okay and so he's he applied multiple times but never got called and then we applied together and I got called so now, like, define apply together are you sitting in the same frame we're in the same frame we're like hey cast us as a couple yeah, you you're know trying Survivor to manifest does this blood versus water season literally <laughs> Survivor does like all these crazy stuff we're like we could go like undercover you know play against one another then together and then um, they emailed back and they're like hey we want you <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, great. And he he's so supportive, though. He's like, go live it. Like, have as much fun as you can. And that's why I'm here. So when you discovered Survivor, was it like a, I need to go back and rewatch all the seasons type of thing? Do you remember, like, a particular moment that had you hooked? Oh, yeah. It was, I forgot what season it, it was, but it was um, a season with Parvati. Mm -hmm. And, I, like, my second episode, I was like, I can do that. I can do this. I am good. Like, I need to be on Survivor. And then I was like, okay, I need to, like, not watch every season forward, but I need yeah. to go backward. And I literally rewatched every season because I wanted to see. And then... 
after 40, you know, to change up the whole game. So it's like brand new. And this yeah. is our moment to like define the game and to set new barriers and new rules. And I think like that's what got me hooked. And I was like, okay, I'm going to apply. So in that being said, give me one winner and one non-winner who you feel like you identify with the most. Is Parvati in that list? Um, no, Tony for a winner, okay. actually. Okay, well, you're going, that <laughs> could not be more opposite in my opinion. Yeah, at first I was like, you know, I like Parvati and I like the way she played, but Tony is more me. Like, yeah. I love the scheming. I love that he got along with everybody at camp. I love that he actually worked for everything that he, like, achieved in the game. Interesting. Like, he just, like, he never, like, got dragged by everybody else you know what i yeah. mean like he made his moves and he was bold about it and i think that's what draw me to him um and i love that he won two season yeah absolutely <laughs> so i think whatever he did uh worked and i think the person that i identified the most with is nasir Oh, because yeah. we have like exactly copy and paste background like we grew up the exact same way except that like I think I'd probably play a little bit more of a social and strategic game than this year instead of like a, I don't want to be everybody provider, if that makes sense. Okay, so you're not climbing up a tree, chopping down coconuts nope. or anything like that? I know how to climb a coconut tree. I did that when I was younger. Like, yeah. that's how I grew up. But no, I think maybe depending if like, you know, people get voted off and there's no way for us to get food and then i have to like show that part of me um i can fish and i can climb coconut trees to get food so then it'll probably come out but i don't plan on being a provider that is so interesting so the, to have the skill set to do it and to be like i'm good because you just don't want to paint a target on yourself i'm assuming it's not even that i don't want to paint a target on myself i don't want to repeat mistakes that i've already seen happen mm. right so for Nasir, like all he did was he is categorized in that provider from the viewer's perspective, right? And it probably is different in the game, but I don't want to be the provider. And like, yeah. I want to play a badass game and I want to go there and I want to like rewrite, like my, this season should be different. I don't want to do what the past season, what anybody in the past season did. I want it to be like game changing moment. I want brand new moves. I want things that you would probably never imagine. I just want to do those things. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. do you have anything in mind or is it more so just a mentality you're walking in with? It's a mentality. I think Survivor is an ever changing game. Of and course. I think the one thing about it is that you have to be adaptable enough to make sure that you are going with the flow. But at the same time, you're kind of like getting your way by having people do what you want them to do but mm. you're not making all the big moves you're 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 kind of helping with the big moves and it's your idea but you have other people kind of work it out for you so at least at the end if you get to final three you can say okay that was my idea i had you like like go through with it and mm. here i am like sitting so how do you think you're going to be perceived by people out here honestly it's a thing that I've been like thinking a lot and I think when you think about one person is going to be the winner and 19 of us are going to play a game, do you want to play a mediocre game or do you want to go balls to the wall? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it doesn't matter how people perceive me. I think I'm going in with like a genuine heart and I'm going in with a mentality of just having fun. Yeah. And I think... Um, if I have like strong alliances, I'm very loyal. Uh -huh. So if I have my alliances, when I say the word like I trust you, I'm I'm that person that no matter what, it's not gonna break. And like you need to know that my bond is like all I have basically. Uh -huh. Like my words are my uh, are all I have. And so I feel like what other people that's probably not in my close group or whatever I do to. I, I don't care how they perceive me because at the end of the day, it is a game. And if you're, if you're okay with talking your way out of it at the end, I think it doesn't matter, right? It's a lot of people get caught up at the final three mm -hmm. talking their way out of it. And that's what got them like, you know, people can perceive it if you don't explain it in a different light. Do you plan on telling people your job? Because obviously there is this affiliation yeah. with sales. No, I would probably say that I'm like a visual merchandising. I'm going to keep it in the retail world. Interesting. Visual merchandising is all about the eyes and all about the fine detailing. It's nothing to do with interacting with people. I think I've thought about that before. Since I'm such a strong salesperson, um, with sales come like, you know, all this crazy stuff that people think. Of and course. then in the sales world, you don't want to be desperate. So sellers are usually desperate. So if you're coming into a store and 
immediately as you walk in, someone's like, hi, welcome in. And you're like, okay, I just want to look around, right? Uh -huh. And then, like, from the get-go, that's desperation. You probably won't interact with that person again. But if you let that person look and come up, and if they're touching something, you'll be like, I love that. It's mm. an immediate bond, right? And so you don't want to come off as a salesperson. I think it's desperation. Yeah. I mean, how much do you think there is a Venn diagram between what you've learned through doing retail and something like Survivor? Because you know, selling someone a shirt might yeah. be like selling someone a plan to vote somebody out. Absolutely, and I think it would probably overlap a lot. And I planned on doing it, but like I said, I want to be able to sell through other people. Mm. So I'm a manager. Yeah. I manage people. It's what I do, right? So I want to manage people by telling them the plan and have them kind of go through with it rather than I'm like, oh, let's vote him out. I don't want it to come out of my mouth yeah. instead of saying like, hey, what do you think of this person? Like, yeah. do you think they're strong? Like, would you see them like beating us at the end if we're, and so like kind of just feeding information and have someone else execute. I mean, you're talking about, you know, the people you'd like to ideally work with, though yeah. your word is your bond. Yeah. Are there qualities you're looking for in an alliance? Are you searching for that ride or die that day I, one? I really am. You know, one thing that I loved about 44 mm. is that, you know, Carson, Carolyn, and Jam Jam, no matter what, like they stuck it out, even though they knew like, Everybody is a threat. Like all three of them knew one another that they're a threat, but they let fire be the decision to take one of them out. And I think for me, I'm looking for trust. Like I genuinely want to trust people. I often get told that I trust too easily. And that's something that I have to be careful with mm. because I'm like I said, I'm loyal. So the minute I feel like someone come to me and they're like, hey, you want to be friends? And I'm like, yes, let's be friends. We're best friends. And then I trust but I need to be like mindful of that. But at the same time, trust is something that I'm looking for and loyalty from my alliances. So that being said, if it comes down to like a Jesse Cody decision or even what we saw briefly with Jam Jam and Carolyn of, okay, this person's really dangerous. I mean, how are you gonna contest that emotional bond and trust with the, the winning odds? I think at the end of the day, like there is a time and place for everything, right? And I think if you have someone, for instance, like if I know you're going to beat me uh -huh. if we get to the end and we're best friends, I have to vote you out, right? That's where it comes to like, hey, we're going to mend this over with after Survivor, but we all know what we're here for. Um, and I think just like making sure that, and at the end, explaining it to you, right. like I knew you were going to beat me. Like you were my biggest threat, like explaining that to someone and saying, if I didn't take you out, you would have been, you would have won. Mm. And so I think like that should at least hold some ground. Who knows? We'll see. Well, well let's talk about this competition a bit, because obviously you've been, I'm sure, eyeballing each other, making judgments in the past few days. Is there anybody right now who just from a pure vibes perspective, you're saying, okay, this is someone that could be sort of part of that trust circle if we land oh, yeah. on the beach, best case scenario? Oh yeah, if I've ha I have I have my eyes on a few people that I think that we would jive really well. That yeah, I was like in my notebook, I pencil out best friends forever question mark. <laughs> like I am that psychotic person that's like, okay, this will be my friend. But again, we have to make sure that that person's on my tribe. And there's a few people that has been a little standoffish or just you know like very neutral okay. facial expressions yeah and let's, so, let's get some descriptions here i want to hear i want to hear some of your future bffs to start oh yeah so we don't know their name of course no one of them have like red hair lots of tattoos love her um the other one uh has like a red tank top with some shorts mm -hmm. dark black hair mm -hmm. um straight hair and then uh, um, there's this guy, he looked like Thor. I don't, I don't know. You might see him. Um, and then there's this other girl with like a colorful top and long braids. Like mm. those are the people that's been giving me like really good vibes. Like nice. we can really vibe with. Um, and then there's a few people that are just like blank facial expressions. So I think it's just cause they don't want to give off too much and that's probably their gameplay, but we'll see. Yeah. So when it comes to advantages yeah <laughs> obviously a big part of the new era how eager are you to do this how much is it going to be idle sale half off everything must Ooh, go uh i definitely want to find one maybe two maybe three all the idols Sky's i the can limit. find <laughs> i think i'll go idol hunting for sure i want to find it i i think it's a it's a key part of playing survivor if you don't find an idol were you even on survivor <laughs> did you even play um 
but yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely idol hunting, and I think like making sure if I find one and nobody sees that I found it, nobody's gonna know. Mm. I'm not telling anybody, and you bet your ass I'm not playing it for anybody. See, no that's interesting. What. Going back to like the entire trust idea with some of your closest allies, even then Still you're like, don't tell them Mm-mm. Interesting. because it might come the final five, and my closest ally try to vote me out. Mm. You always have to think about like the long term, and when you're in the moment, you get caught up. So I made a list of everything that I will and won't do, and I crammed that. I was yeah. like, I'm not doing that. So it's how long not was happy. the list? <laughs> Probably like a few. A few each. Yeah, yeah, I mean, to keep your game relatively open, yeah, but I think absolutely. you everyone walks in with that line, those things that they yeah. will or will not do. So I think that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, like some hard lines that you draw. Um, and we've seen people play like Idol for other people, and it's really good gameplay in the moment, but then you turn around and you vote them out like two episodes later, and it's like, why did you even play your Idol? Why didn't you keep it? Um, and I think like I just want to make sure that, you know, my Idol is my Idol and nobody else's. So that being said, let's say in the first couple days, a boat pulls up at your camp Mm -hmm. and a guy walks out and you know what this means. Pick one person from your tribe to go on a journey. Is this something that true to your idol hungry nature, you're jumping up at the opportunity? Are you going to try to get someone else to do it? I I won't like I won't volunteer myself. That's Mm. that. Everybody knows that you volunteer yourself and you're the first person going home because everybody always think like, okay, there is something there. We've seen all the episode. There's there's the chance to get an idol and mm-hmm. if you come back you have to if you volunteer yourself you have to disclose that you have the idol right yeah if you don't now when you lost your your vote then you're fucked you're basically <laughs> going home so no i if they volunteer me i'll be like okay i'll go and i think then that's where like the survivor whether you tell it all or you kind of go with the flow and read people vibes a little mm. and see what to like disclose What's been your preparation process for this? Because it's clear from a social perspective, like you have a good read of people. You brought that up before, but physically, strategically, what's been the process? Physically, I've been swimming a lot. I recently learned how to swim about a year ago. Okay. (laughs) I drowned when I was younger. (laughs) Eight-year-old, quicksand. It was just crazy. Oh, it wasn't even on water? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? But um, I never really tried to, like, learn how to swim after. Um, But after I applied, the first time, I couldn't swim. And so that was like a blocker, and I didn't get to go further. Mm. So that's last year. And then I reapplied. I took swimming classes. My husband taught me how to swim. And every single day, like after work or before work, I go and I swim. I learned how to like jump into an eight foot pool without freaking out, <laughs> which is great. Cause I was like, it's going to happen there. I don't want to be like a global embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I told someone national and they said, try global. And I was like, great. I don't want to be. Yeah, Survivor has a big international <laughs> fan base. I was like, yeah, I don't want to be a global embarrassment. So pretty much dad and I've been like going to the gym some and I think like mentally just have fun like that's Mm. that's the like I haven't thought of anything mentally I'm a person like when it happens it happens and my husband hate when I say that if it happened it happened when it happens I'll deal with it then yeah I'm I'm that kind of person because I think if you put a lot stored like you go crazy in the brain you know what I mean like I try to if it happens, it happens. So, and, and I think that's the new era as well. Sometimes yeah. there are tribal councils one day after the other after the other. Exactly. And I think the more you keep in your brain, the more your head gets weighed down in, in, this, in that quicksand. And yeah. you want to be able to, to be light on your feet, pull yourself out. For sure. I just want to have fun. Like there's 8,000 people apply for Survivor, right? I'm one of 20 that got chosen. That alone is winning. I mean, everything else would be great. But like I just have to, co- you have to come in with the mentality. If you think about the money, you'll go crazy crazy yeah like you have to think about all the fun you'll have like this is a once in a lifetime experience that you don't really get to do so I'm just going in with that mentality when it comes to your own decision making experiences in your life are you a person to that point who just goes with your gut are you more of a person to like think through logical steps how do you make important decisions I'm a gut person Mm. I'm really like I'm one with my intuition I always say that like it will if I close my eyes, I can see the answer of something. Like, that's how one with my intuition. So I feel like I can't force it. If something is not, like, happening, I need to read that. And I think, like, I, that is one thing that I need to remind myself is to just go with your intuition and don't get, like, swayed by any anything or anyone. Yeah. What do you think is your hottest survivor take to that point, speaking to that gut? What do you think is the most, like, controversial thing you have about a player or a season or the show in general? 
I don't know. There's like a few times where I think people just played like I'm big on like the idol thing and mm -hmm. people play their idol for other people or they have their idol in their pocket. I think that's a big one. And they're kind of on the edge of their seat. Like, should I play my idol? Should I not? And they don't play their idol and they go home, right? I think one thing that's like overlooked is Heidi last yeah. season. She played her idol and we all thought like everybody at first, even I was like, why did she play her idol? She didn't have to play her idol. But when you think back to it, like she wasn't in on a lot of the votes, right? And that was like a pivotal moment in time. And she was like, you know what? fuck it, I'm going to play my idol or I'm probably going to go home with it in my pocket. So I think like, just go with your guts and like, if you have an idol, play it if you think you're in jeopardy. Yeah, it's this thing of if you want to guarantee yourself one more day, Absolutely. because again, so much can happen in one day of Survivor, especially nowadays, like yeah. make that a safety for Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely, I agree, yeah. One final thing, if you could pick a celebrity or a fictional character to bring out as a loved one for a loved one's visit, ooh, who would you ooh. pick? Celebrity or a fictional character? Let's see. Mm. That's a tough one. Yeah. I don't know. I'd probably say Michelle Obama. Okay, nice. <laughs> I love her. She's a Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, I would love for her to be my loved one visit. Sorry. Sorry, babe. <laughs> You did I not mean, hear listen, that. <laughs> wait for him to be elected president, and maybe he'll be in the competition. But Michelle exactly. Obama, incredibly respectable answer. Exactly. <laughs> well, how are you feeling right now? Because I know you talk about trying to go with the flow as much as possible. But we talked about this at the beginning, right yeah. before we hopped in, that so much anticipation building yeah. up. As we're sort of mixing the ingredients, what's the emotional cocktail at the moment before things get poured out? Oh, uh, the emotional cocktail is, let's see, a little bit of nerves, um, a lot of like, can I play already? Yeah. And then. A little bit of like, okay, if this person's on my tribe, where do I see myself with them? So it's a lot of like guessing game at this moment. And we're like, genuinely, I'm just excited to like get on the beach and like start playing. Because I feel like once I see who is on my tribe, like that will define my whole gameplay. Because yeah. I kind of have like these small ideas of who people are and their personality and trying to kind of read their body languages. But when I know who's on my team, I know what I can control. Well, this was so fantastic to Thank talk with you. you. To be corny, you are a gem. And oh. <laughs> it was so great to get to hear your experiences and you know what you're going to bring to it. And I'm excited to see like once the door opens Absolutely. and what's in the room, then you'll be able to truly take a look and sell the hell out of it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are all set. You're good to go. Thank but it was so, so nice to meet you. Enjoy the rest of this, and uh, we'll see you out on the beach. Sounds good.